Hello and welcome to Cavell Group's podcast, Running Up to Our Cloud Com Summit. We've been running these for the last few weeks with some of our key vendors coming into the show, and we're delighted to have Jeff Boslam today join us from Cisco. Cisco is one of our gold sponsors of the event and has been a long-term supporter of Cloud Com Summit, so really excited to have him on board. So, uh, Jeff, I'd love if you could uh, introduce yourself quickly and really give us a bit of insight, maybe, uh, through your introduction of where do you see some of these largest opportunities arising for service providers in the business communication space? Awesome. Thank you, Dominic. Thanks for having me along. Quick background on, on myself. 10 years at Cisco and and 30 days or thereabouts in, in Europe. So I've uh, recently joined uh, the Cisco EMEA team to lead the cloud and hosted collaboration team. So that's the team responsible for taking our service providers on the journey uh, with us around our, our cloud collaboration solutions and our hosted collaboration solutions and, and getting them to market. I, before here, I was in Australia in the collaboration business, yeah, working uh, with our customers and our partners. Cisco in, in ANZ and in, in Australia and New Zealand was really at the forefront of some of the trends that we're seeing. Uh, some of that's just through the, the sheer necessity, the, the geographic necessity of and diversity of Australia, both in terms of where it sits in the in the globe, as well as the the, the expanse of the organisation of embracing these new collaboration capabilities, embracing cloud and hosted to get them in the hands of our customers. And I'm really excited to be able to, to uh, come over here to Europe and uh, and take that journey on what is a much bigger stage and uh, excited about that. Yeah. So I guess delving into that a little bit about what are the changes that we're seeing? I'll, I'll, I'll break into, into a couple of, or a few of the, the big chunks. Firstly, business communications uh, is becoming richer and richer than we've ever seen. Our customers are wanting more and more from their communications than they've ever wanted before. You know, and that's partially driven by the rise of their consumer communications, whether that be social you know, media type thing, and whether that's generational or simply just us becoming more familiar with those, with those tools. We're finding that, that calling is no longer enough to satisfy our business communication needs. That, that uh, while it's super important, uh, we need to provide you know, messagings and meetings teams. We need to merge our hardware and software together to provide these fantastic room experiences, these fantastic device and phone experiences. So a big opportunity is how do we move to bringing on these richer opportunities for our customers and what does that provide us as opportunities as service providers and Cisco. You know, with that, there's certainly been a rise of cloud in how we how that provides these experiences. Now, that's also created the rise of the over the tops, which is challenging our service providers to move faster. You know, typically if they're working on, you know, five plus year development life cycles, that's no longer going to cut it in an environment where innovation is happening at an agile speed. I don't know about you, but I know on my personal device, I must get 10 plus applications updated every day. Uh, that level of fast innovation, fast response to our customers' needs means that we, you know, cloud is going to be important in delivering on that. And how do we embrace that is another big opportunity for, for our service providers. The third one as, as an opportunity is this, the rise of the importance of the workplace, of the rise of the importance of the workspace. And... And we need to think of that not just in terms of the office. Well, that's very, very important and critical and becomes a key element to it. Our workspace is really, you know, from the moment we wake up these days to the moment we go to bed, we are certain individuals, certainly myself, are engaged in, in some form of work. And, and how, do we, how do we provide these fantastic tools that, that span all of, those, um, all of those engagements? You know, right through to... How do we, as I said to you, the importance of the workplace, our, our, our offices and, and the change in collaboration within those. At Cisco, we've really embraced this I and mean, we've created some fantastic workplaces. I don't know if, you've, if everyone knows, but we were recently voted the best workplace uh, in the world. So it was just a, an award that we won around uh, best place to work. And, and that's on the back of the environment that we've created and the workspaces that we've created and I mean, I, I, I couldn't do my job without the tools. And I'll certainly I'd be even take it one step further. You know, that workspace that Cisco's created means I wouldn't want to work anywhere else as well. So we've certainly seen a, a rise of the workspace. And 
And, and lastly, the other opportunity I think comes into what we would call cognitive collaboration and APIs. Our customers might not call that, they might call it AI, they might call it digital assistance, but the need for us to be able to embrace cognitive collaboration and provide our end users more powerful collaboration experiences. As I said, that could be as simple as a digital assistant. It could be as simple as, as document a meeting. For me, you know, coming over to, to Europe, meeting a lot of new people uh, in, in what is a large organisation, Cisco, simple things like having digitally added name tags on my meetings, you know, are below the faces of the people I'm talking to so that I, I, I have the names. Now, these experiences are very powerful and wanted by our customers. And, and with that, there is that API element to it as well, which is uh, how do we, how do our service providers use this enhanced collaboration and, and interface it into the businesses of our customers? And, and the service providers that do this the best will create the highest levels of value uh, for our customers and the highest level of customer stickiness. Again, this is a quick example. You know, at, at Cisco, I have Salesforce as our customer relationship manager. I have WebEx as our collaboration tools and they are interlinked. So as updates are being made, you know, in Salesforce, they're appearing for me in WebEx. And when I make updates in WebEx, they're appearing in Salesforce, really simplifying the way I collaborate uh, with our customers and our team and, and saving me lots and lots of time in, you know, double entry or making lots of phone calls or just having that at my, at my hand. So that cognitive API, I think, is a big opportunity for our service providers as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree on all those three points. I think uh, we're definitely seeing massive changes in the workforce, um, both driven by changes in customer focus and requirements, um, and also the way people want to communicate and how they're going to communicate in the future. One of our recent reports looking at how uh, remote working is changing is we're seeing just a massive trend towards uh, kind of remote working, uh, remote offices, people working away from that fixed desk environment. So bringing in obviously solutions around that um, is a key consideration that service providers need to take take on that. Are there any other kind of key changes in the end customer focus and requirements outside of the, the collaboration um, space? Is, is mobility becoming more important to your customers there as well? Certainly. I think so. Firstly, end customer focus is is hugely, hugly important. And if I, again, we go back to what we've all become accustomed to with our with our devices. You know, we, we're happy to switch between applications and move fast. And, and so therefore our end customer experience is really critical. And if, if I break it down to three things that uh, I think it needs to be, first, it needs to be really simple. So when we're creating these end customer experiences, they need to be very easy to, to understand, uh, very easy to use. And it can't just be very easy to use on my mobile, but then not on my laptop or very easy to use on my laptop, but not my not in my other collaboration experiences. So I think we need to create these really simple experiences. They also need to be magical. They need to be wowing our customers with what we can provide them. We need to be able to, you know, uh, create a fantastic experience which they love, whether that be as simple as, you know, from my mobile device, which is with me all the time. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm on a meeting or a call with that and I move into a meeting room for me, I'll be able to then easily swipe that call onto a, onto a, device in a meeting room, getting access to a, a bigger collaboration platform landscape, that we need to provide those really magical experiences. And, and, and thirdly, the end customer experience needs to be opened. There's no point having an end customer experience where I can only communicate with my team or with people in my organization. I need to be able to collaborate you know, broadly externally with my partners and my customers. I need to be able to you know, link that into my business application. So at an at a, at a end customer experience, I mean, simple, magical, open are really important. The other thing we have to understand about end customer experience is it's more and more diverse. As I said earlier, is is that you know no longer is my desk phone enough. You know, I mean, it has to incorporate my mobile, my personal collaboration. It has to incorporate my huddle spaces, my my meeting rooms and group rooms, the boardrooms. There's such a diverse need or range of end user experiences for for collaboration that we need to we need to um, incorporate. Uh, with our with our experiences and and be cognizant of the fact that because of all these different ways to to collaborate, that no two customers are going to start the journey the same. There's no two user experiences which will be completely identical. So we need to be able to uh, have a collaboration journey that allows us to start with our end users where they want, 
whether they want to start at calling or they want to start with meetings, they want to start with messaging or they're, they're going the full workplace transformation or they're, they're looking at remote and mobile workers. We need to have a, a collaboration solution that takes into account that, that no two of the end users are the same. And I'll probably just dive into that because it's important when we understand those end customer experiences, what we're trying to create, we as the experts, when, when our customers look to, to Cisco and they look to our service providers, they're really looking to us as the experts in the fields to, to provide them the, the strategy and guidance uh, moving forward. And we have to, I guess, be careful not to solve each one of their near-term needs with a different point solution and not take into account a longer-term strategy with our customers of, yes, we understand you're starting your journey on some meetings, but we understand you have some workplace conversations going on uh, and the change of your, of, your, of your work environment. And we need to be cognizant of what we put in place now meets those longer term strategies uh, and not you know, send, our, send our customers into a, uh, into a solution cul-de-sac. That makes complete sense to me. I think that that real focus around the no two users is the same, I think is a really interesting point there and making sure that your service providers have the tools and the solutions that they have in hand to be able to serve that diverse need um, is going to be a key consideration going forward in the future. I think that's uh, some really interesting points you've raised there and look forward to hearing more about that um, later on uh, at, at the event. So we've obviously, uh, we're coming into a, a situation in the market where we're seeing more and more competitors, larger competitors start to uh, start to take force in the markets. It's no longer one or two vendors, but it's a real diverse lineup there. What do you think the major considerations that your service providers need to, uh, to make when they're sort of looking at major decisions on what platform they should be using? Yeah, so so I think you, you called out. You know, it is a really competitive market out there, more than it's ever been, and and not only is it is it competitive, it's moving fast. So it's it's really challenging our service providers, and we understand that in making some big strategic um, decisions. I'll go through a, and link it to a few of the points we've we've discussed earlier. So so firstly, when they when they're looking at making these considerations, and understanding that that no two use cases are the same, no two customers are the same, they, they need to choose a platform that caters for all of the collaboration workloads, all right? That, that, in, that it caters for, you know, callings and meetings, devices, your, your cognitive elements. It allows you to, to stitch together the broad collaboration landscape that, that the service provider is not becoming the glue uh, and having to, you know, make all of these workloads, all of these workloads work. I think we also have to understand that that customers are just becoming more connected and more global, right? And and with that, choosing a platform with a with a with a truly global uh, reach and a uh, a truly global um, uh, feature set, I think is is really important. Thirdly, I think we we need to look at choosing a platform that they believe in can meet the the pace of change. It is proven that they can they can. It can stay at the forefront of um, the fast-moving environment they're in, and 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 with all of those considerations, you know, choose a platform with a business model that supports them, that understands them, that that invests in them. So, you know, there's there's a, there's a lot in that for them to do, and and certainly Cisco and, and and probably a quick plug here for for what we're doing. You know, we have a world's leading collaboration platform. We've brought together all of our workloads, you know, callings, messagings. Meetings, teams, device, cognitive onto that single global platform. You know, but with that, we're a hundred percent partner aligned. You know, I mean, we understand our SPs have have different business models, um, and they're going to want to partner with us in different ways. You know, whether that be they want a wholesale or a resale model. You know, whether they want to deeply integrate it into the network to differentiate, or they're looking for pure cloud agility. Whether they want to use their brand or our brand or both, the options are available. We've partnered with our service providers for over 20 years in this space and I truly believe that we will be successful together on this next journey in collaboration and while challenging at times very very exciting I agree on that point I think the the partnership model we need to look at how we can continue to build strong partnerships and supporting uh, supporting custom uh, your customers and supporting your uh, your retailers um, as we've seen in this market it's very uh, channel focused so uh, making sure that your channel and those channels beyond your channel are being served with all their diverse needs and all their needs going forward. Um, I think it's going to be a key consideration there. So uh, yeah, I think uh, interesting points being raised there. 
So uh, last but not least, Jeff, I think this is your first time coming to the event, but uh, as I said, Cisco has been a great supporter, both of uh, our European endeavours with the Cloudcom Summit and also in the US. Um, what, what are you really looking forward to uh, out of the event yourself? So correct, this is my first flight, so really excited to be, to be coming along. My team are super positive about this event. I mean, I think the words they used, you know, were things like, you know, vibrant, and it was a must-attend event. When I, when, I, when I certainly when I joined here, this was a cannot be left off the agenda event. Uh, and and you know the way they've, they've pitched it to me, and what I'm really looking forward to is you know it's this coming together of the industry's leading thinkers, vendors, researchers, service providers to discuss what we see as current and future opportunities, uh, how we create value together, how we solve problems together, and how we bring these these trends in the marketplace. You know. Uh, around cloud and, and workplace and mobility uh, and discuss, you know, opportunities that we can create from all of them together. So I'm really excited about getting along to the CloudCom Summit. Uh, I'm really hoping that everyone else does as well. I'm looking forward to um, having a chance to meet uh, many new faces and uh, enjoy some some challenging and enthralling conversations. Great. Well, I think that's uh, that's exactly what we're trying to do with the event is bring together the industry and make sure that everyone is on a, a common journey to serve, our, serve their customers better, understand the trends that are going on in the industry and uh, beyond all, uh, be successful out of it. So really looking forward to having you there, Jeff, and uh, really excited to have Cisco uh, present again, take part in the event. Thank you very much for joining us here. For anyone who's listening, who's interested in joining the event, tickets are still available at cloudcomsummit.com. It's on the 5th of March in London. We're really excited and uh, can't wait to have you all attend with us. So thanks very much, Jeff. Been a pleasure chatting with you and uh, look forward to hearing from you at the event. Awesome. Thanks, Dominic.